Hi everybody, um, nice to see you guys again. Um, so I came back from the um, Green Market today, Union Square Green Market in Manhattan, and I went there especially looking for stinging nettles, because I thought that it was gonna be around the time of the year that they'd show up, and here they are. So I brought some back, and I wasn't sure what to do with them. The first time I had stinging nettles, in my life was in Rome when we had, oh, it was so long ago, stinging nettle risotto, which was the most delicious thing, very light and green and spring-like. I couldn't believe how lovely it tasted. I never even heard of stinging nettles before, even though in around New York, upstate New York, all around the East Coast, these things grow wild all over the place every, every spring. So, I mean, you know, I never knew. But anyway, I didn't find these in anybody's backyard. I actually paid for them, but you know, that's what you have to do sometimes. But the thing about stinging nettles is that they actually sting, which is kind of unfortunate in a way, but the thing is also is that you can get rid of the sting very quickly. So look how beautiful these are. So the thing is you do not want to touch them. Gloves would be good, which I don't actually have gloves, but we have this instead. So what I want to do here is just cut off, whoa, how am I going to do this? This way. Cut off some of the thick stems, like that. Okay, and we'll get rid of this. We'll just put that in there and get rid of it. Don't let any, anybody touch that. And now what you want to do is you want to boil them, just blanch them very quickly. And that way, the this, this stinging goes away immediately, which is really great. There it goes. Woo, don't touch it. I just touched it. I just stuff it in there. And you just really, look at that beautiful, like kind of bluishy green color. Kind of beauty, right? Now these things, these things taste so delicious. It's sort of like, to me, I feel that they're sort of a mix between spinach or and sorrel, or maybe that's a little bit of a stretch, but spinach and a sort of lemony undertone. I don't know, that's what I, I sense. Okay, you know what, this has been about 30 seconds, not even. And I think that's really all you want. You just wanna just take that sting off it. All right, just pull it out. And I'll pull them over here. And I'm just gonna put cold water over it to stop the cooking, but also to you know, it also will set the color. See, all of a sudden they put the cold water on it, it sort of brings up that really beautiful dark green color, which does set it, um, which is lovely because when you um, blanch something, you're never going to get that dark color when you make a pesto. Like, I'm going to make a pesto with this, I'm pretty sure. In fact, I know I'm, that's exactly what I'm going to make as a pesto. So. That should do it. And now the thing is, look at this. See, now you can touch them. Oh, well, you can't touch that, but you can touch these. <laughs> so now what you want to do, these feel really good. They, they barely cook. See, what is this music? What is this music? I should be getting as much water out of this as possible. Now, what you really want to do is just get as much water out of this as possible. Because you're going to... Okay, here we go. Oh, bring it over this way. Okay, so now what you want to do with these things is you want to pull it all apart. Look how pretty that is. And, and just kind of rip off all these, like, stems. Look at that. You get that off and that off. Is this, like, Cinderella or something? What are we listening to? Nino Rota. Nino Rota, really? What the hell is it? Um, anyway, so just do this and get all the stems off. The thing about nettles... It sounds like Romeo and Juliet. Uh, Romeo and Juliet, and yeah. Did me, that. Uh, oh, what? Yeah. I did that. Oh, I didn't either. Um, the thing about nettles is that you can do a lot of things with anything that you would do with any other green. You could basically do with these. I mean, I like... I love the... Um, the um, risotto, which is really delicious, and and I'm making a, a pesto tonight, which is um, perfect 
for for pasta, and but I've also made um, a frittata with it, and it's great in a uh, a uh, sandwich. And what's really good, like a panini with a stinging nettle pesto, and then you put a little layer of mozzarella, and then you kind of like heat, wrap it up in tinfoil and heat it in the oven until it gets all melted and delicious. Anyway, so this is really basically what you're doing here. Okay, so we're just about ready here. Just get a couple of these off. And this is actually kind of fun. You know, it's interesting. These things are very, very dry feeling. I don't know whether that's because of the collapsed uh, stingers or what. I mean, I feel no stinging on my hands whatsoever. I've completely squelched that. All right, so look at that. That's about ready. Let's just get rid of this crap here. Oh, now I know this tune. All right, so now that's ready. So that's ready to go into making pesto. So now with this stuff, you just sort of proceed like you would with basil or anything else or with arugula or any kind of pesto you want to make and I'm going to start with some garlic just a little garlic that looks pretty good right yeah so the thing with me with pesto any kind of pesto is that I feel like most people I'm, I have to say maybe Americans more than Italians I would think use way too much garlic in a pesto. I mean, I'm using one, you know, the, the garlic is raw in pesto, so you really don't want to use a lot. So I'm using maybe like a half a clove and that's it. So I'm going to start with some pine nuts. I don't know how many that is. It's like a, I don't know, half a cup or something. And a half a big clove of garlic. I mean, it gives so much flavor. I mean, you really don't want to use that much. Some people, you know, I've been to friends' houses, I'm not going to say who they are, but they will put like six cloves of raw garlic in a pesto. I don't get that. And they say Italians, Southern Italians use too much garlic. No, Americans use too much garlic. Like it's an old hippie trade or something. All right, so that's good. I got the garlic going with the um, pine nuts. And then I'm going to put the nettles in. Look, I feel weirdly dry. It's so strange. Such a strange green. Okay, so put that in. Give that a, and then pulse that down. You get a lot of pesto from this, the nettles. Okay, now what we're gonna do is put in some cheese. This is, what is this cheese? This is a mixture I mixed together, a mixture of Grana Padano and, um, I used a pecorino, like a pecorino toscano, or I, I, whatever I had in the refrigerator, I can't remember. But it's sort of, a, it's a mix. And that looks about right. And then you want a little salt, it's a little sea salt, and some olive oil. You know, you're just making pesto like you couldn't make any, any pesto. But this is special because it's stinging nettles. And that looks about right. And for some reason, for me, when I make a stinging nettle, pesto, I want to put some lemon zest in it. It sort of gives it a little lift and it sort of brings out this sort of innate lemoniness that's sort of underneath the surface of this green, the way I see it, the way I taste it. And so that'll do it. I'm not, I wouldn't put pepper in, black pepper, any kind of pepper in with this. It's peppery enough. Give it a little, That looks good, but it needs a little more oil because it's a little dry. You'll notice with nettles that they're, um, they make a, a really fluffy. See, now that's, that's just right. That's just right. The nettles make a very fluffy pesto. It's not as tight as when you make a basil pesto. So you'd actually use more of it in a sauce and probably since there's a little bit of like space between the leaves, you, you probably don't need to loosen it up with a lot of pasta cooking water. But, so now I'm just gonna toss this with some cooked pasta. And by the way, I'm gonna use the nettle cooking water for, um, for my, to cook my pasta in, cause it's got a lot of minerals in it. And 
this stuff, aside from being absolutely delicious, is really good for you. It's got, it's loaded with vitamins and minerals, and it's been used for, you know, zillions of years and as, as a tonic and as a, and actually as a prevention for gout. And I don't know if that, I've never had gout, but if I ever do, oh, I'm going to eat this.